Okay, I want to start off by telling you exactly what tools that I used in this process and you probably will use those also. For starters, a tape measure. <clears throat> a caliber Pacific mop, bore mop is what I used. You don't want to use a brush. A long cleaning rod with a swivel handle. Uh, as long as it swivels, it's fine. And then you also want to mark it somehow. I use duct tape as a flag and you'll see why. So get that in there. Next, you want a dial caliber or a digital caliber, some type of caliber to measure your pellets. And again, caliber specific pellets. Uh, whatever air gun caliber you're going to run this process on, uh, you want the same pellets to use, same caliber. I use these because they're the most inexpensive pellet and 22 caliber. They have the head size is uh, 5.5. Okay, so secret number one uh, to get started in the accuracy process of finding the most optimum pellet for your gun to shoot the best, you want to uh, figure out the twist rate of your barrel. Now, some manufacturers actually have the twist rate marked on the barrel, but not the lesser expensive guns like I have. Um, you can either call them and get the answer. Um, I got uh, two of my guns uh, I called about and they gave me the answer to, but uh, Crossman didn't really specifically know. Um, I got my Crossman Fury right here, my Nitro Piston. Didn't give me an actual uh, twist rate for my barrel, so I kind of, uh, I did the test myself, and that's why you're going to need this cleaning rod with the flag on it and a bore mop. So. Let me show you what I did here, and uh, this is where the cleaning rod, the bore mop, and the tape measure, and the actual flag are in use because you insert the bore mop in the barrel, which I'll show you guys that here in a second, and you set your flag either pointing whatever way you want. I did a half rotation and then I doubled that to get my actual twist rate because uh, if you're new in air gunning or any type of rifling or uh, you don't know what a twist rate is. Basically, it's the actual distance for one full revolution of rifling in your barrel. So, um, air gun barrels range from different twists, 1 to 16, 1 to 18, 1 to 19, 1 to 20, 1 to 22. There's, it's hard telling exactly what uh, barrel twist you have unless you call and ask, and if they don't know, you're going to have to test it yourself. Um, but let me show you. So as you've seen there, uh, I shortened the clean rod up because I wanted to show you so I can get it all in the camera frame of what the half twist rate does when you have the flag pointing in one direction then it comes up half a rotation you just double that number. So uh, this barrel on my nitro piston here is about maybe a 1 in 20 twist rate. Um, so that's first secret. Okay, so secret number two is choosing the correct pellet weight. Now, in a lot of guns, this, this doesn't really matter at close ranges, but it really starts to show at a farther distance because of when you shoot your gun uh, and you start to group at a farther distance than say like 25 yards for a brake barrel, the pellets will actually start destabilizing and start swirling in the actual path of the rifling instead of spinning. So how do you know exactly which pellet grain to use? Well, <laughs> pellet manufacturers didn't just come up with a number. They obviously had a reason why they started with that number or made the pellet that way. Like Crossman 14.3 grain. Uh, I think they in all their manuals they pretty much 
uh, recommend that, that their pellet through their gun. I mean, of course they do, it's their, their gun, but um, they either specifically designed that pellet for these barrels in the 22 caliber, or um, at one gun at one time, a long time ago, they designed the barrel for it, who knows? But it's just like an AR-15. The faster twist rate, say one and seven twist, stabilizes a heavier pellet better at a longer range versus a closer range. So this gun can shoot just about every pellet weight, uh, most common pellet weight, at the same, pretty much the same accuracy at close range. But downrange, farther than 25 yards or so, the actual pellet weight starts to show. It starts to either destabilize or stay stabilized. So how do you know which to choose? Well, um, like I said, slower twist rate, which 1 in 20 is pretty much uh, in the top tier of a slower twist rates, meaning you're going to be shooting a lighter pellet downrange. So what is a lighter pellet? Well, if you think about it, um, let's say lead, uh, lead pellets range, uh, you know, like Crossman's, they're 14 threes, they're on the lower, lower end of the grain of pellets. Uh, you got your 15, eight nines or 16 grains and all them, they're more of a medium weight pellet. So pretty much anything that's 14 grain or so or less, um, you know, this barrel is most optimized for. So, uh, that's what I would stick to personally. If I was going to find the most optimum pellet for this barrel being a one in 20 twist. Okay, so secret number three. You got an idea of what pellet grains to shoot. Uh, like I said, 14 grain or so with this barrel being a 1 in 20 twist. Uh, next comes the head size. Now, uh, these pellets, as stated, have a head size of 5.5 millimeters, but they also have a skirt size that's different, which is 5.52 millimeters. I've measured this out, and this is where your digital caliber or dial caliber or some type of caliber is going to come in handy to measure this. So I measured a pellet uh, straight out of the tin and got the dimension of it, the head size and the skirt size. And then I used my brush again, which I'll show you my cleaning rod and my brush and insert a pellet in the muzzle and pushed it through and took measurements again to see what the rifling did to the pellet itself. So uh, in this type of gun, it's not going to be that clean cut. It's not going to be a perfect pellet coming out with just cut rifling in it. Uh, these spring guns like this, nitro piston or gas ram or uh, any type like that brake barrel is actually going to blow the skirt out. So uh, this is just to give you a good head size because if the skirt's the only thing that's stabilizing in the barrel, the head's just doing this as it's going down the barrel. So that's why I just use these cheap pellets because they're available pretty much everywhere. Um, to show you this. So if you got a gun that's choked like the Umarex Gauntlet, uh, this really doesn't matter. Head size doesn't really matter because in a choked gun, the pellets come out the same exact way every time. Uh, so like 5.4 millimeters is what the choke is in my gauntlet. Doesn't matter what pellet, they all come out the same. Okay, so secret number four. Now, in any air gun that has rifling in it, uh, once you get the pellet weight that you want to shoot and optimize for the barrel, the correct head size, which I didn't mention yet, but you want to shoot a head size that is uh, like 0.2 millimeters bigger or more. Uh, that's pretty much a 
good number that I went by and it's pretty much served me well. Uh, this gun, the rifling actually has a 5.51 uh, head size diameter, bore diameter. So uh, the, pretty much the best pellets, uh, anything bigger than that. But like I said, the rule of thumb for me is 0.2 millimeters more than what it is. So 5.53 head size. But once you get your pellet, uh, the one that you want to shoot or have a couple of them, a couple different uh, manufacturers, um, within the, the grain weight uh, <clears throat> When you start shooting for groups you want to get your barrel tuned to that pellet before you start Actually trying to see what that pellets capable of instead of shooting five or six or ten or fifteen um, I usually shoot in my gauntlet Umarex gauntlet. I have a magazine ten round magazine So I usually shoot a couple mags through it and then in the same group just to watch the pellets and how they act um, if they start, you know, if they start out all sporadic and then they start tightening up, that means that barrel got acclimated to that pellet, and that's part of the barrel tuning process. So in this gun, you know, it just depends if you're shooting the right pellet with the correct head size. Um, it's hard telling exactly what amount of pellets to shoot, but um, I've went by like 25 or 30 rounds or so, 25 or 30 pellets to get the best accuracy out of this gun. Then I start shooting for groups. That way I can see um, after that if it clusters up or not. And if it doesn't, switch pellets. But if it does start to tighten up, shoot more. And um, it's crazy what that'll do because it actually fills um, you know, the imperfections in the rifling and all that stuff to get the, the actual um, barrel tuned to that pellet. So once you do that, you really don't want to switch to a different pellet because you have to start that process all over again. No matter if you know you're shooting um, a pellet that's close to the same weight and head size, it doesn't matter. That pellet is set to this barrel, and if it's shooting good, leave it alone. And you do not need to clean it because every time you shoot, uh, no matter what the gun is, um, the pellets cl actually clean the barrel for you. Every time you shoot, one cleans the last uh, pellet shot, and it leaves its little bit of residue or whatever it is in the barrel. And the next one shot so you don't need to clean your barrel at all um, and if you do this process you know and over and over again you're gonna have to re, re uh, redo your barrel you're gonna have to get it retuned to the pellet all right so the fifth secret in the most optimized accuracy uh, for your gun now in PCP air rifles the Pretty much number one culprits in velocity, spread, and pretty much everything that can go wrong is O-rings. Make sure you check your O-rings. Um, you know, lesser expensive guns pretty much um, have O-ring problems. I've noticed that. Um, my Beeman Chief, the O-ring on the bolt, um, they go, they wear out really quick and they go bad. So you might have to replace that if you notice a, a drop in velocity or some type of um, weird thing going on with your groups when they start either opening up or uh, vertical dispersion. Um, you know, they wear out though because of shooting so much. I've shot my beam in chief and my gauntlet so much that I've had to replace the O-rings on them. And it really does show downrange when it's wearing out because I've had a, I had a gun tuned one day and the next day I go out and it's just shooting all over the place. And that was the main reason O-rings are probably the number one enemy to a PCP air gunner. But uh, anyway, the next thing is the, uh, well, unregulated PCP. To get the most optimized accuracy velocity uh, spread downrange is shoot at that power curve. Um, so unregulated, you know, is going to have a curve for the whole shot count of your fill. So if you get up to 35 shots, you're only going to get maybe... Uh, 10 of those if that um, I know my beam in chief. I got it tuned now with you if you're using the right pellet You're gonna get more shots consistent shots because it's gonna seal better um, Everything's in order and stars are aligned um, You know, you're not gonna have that problem with the regulated gun now Regulated gun if it's again not sealing correctly. You're gonna see a sporadic uh, velocity spread uh, a uh, actual regulated gun, in my opinion, should shoot pretty much spot on every shot. Um, but you know, nothing is exactly perfect. 
I've gotten my Umarex gauntlet pretty much tuned um, to where um, each shot is within one to two foot per second of each other, which is, I mean, pretty much perfect. But moving to the brake barrel uh, air rifle, or any other type of air rifle besides that, um, brake barrels though, which are the you know another the other type of common air rifle, is on the lesser expensive ones the seals are not the greatest um, because they are imported from uh, either China or another um, country. The seals are not the best in the world, um, so. You either get some good ones with good seals or you get some bad ones and um, you might get a decent one and you shoot it a couple times and they start to wear out really quick or get weathered or cracked or whatever but brake barrel air guns usually have a uh, breech seal right where the barrel breaks and on the inside they have the piston seal so um, the best advice to get the velocity spread as the tightest as possible is pretty much just replace those if you're able. If not, take your gun into a qualified air gun smith. Um, I do mine um, on my nitro piston now. I have a Vortec uh, piston uh, seal and then I replaced it with a brand new, uh, I think it was Crossman OEM uh, breech seal and that right there will solve most of your sporadic velocities and this gun actually shoots just as good if not better than my Umarex gauntlet. It basically tunes a turns a brake barrel air rifle into a uh, regulated gun, which it should be because it's the same air, you know, same air amount every time it shoots. But if you're noticing a huge difference or spread, that's the reason why. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, just a lot of information out there. I tried to get, um, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people lately about air guns, and hopefully you guys comment below and um, let a lot of people know that I'm not feeding you just a lot of bull because I'm not. This is 100% truth. I've done uh, pretty much last year, starting in June, from I got my first PCP air rifle, I've done as much field testing as I can. And, you know, like I said, why these are the five top secrets, because you really don't hear about this stuff. It's out there, but you don't hear about it. Um, and, again, shooting a, a pellet at short range, different, different grains, is not going to really matter or show much. Shooting it at a farther distance is going to show the actual difference of your twist rate, your pellets, all this, all, you know, all that stuff. So... Like I said, I've been helping a lot of people out here lately with air guns, and it's not that I'm, you know, I'm not trying to give you guys a lot of, uh, you know, just snake oil, whatever you want to call it. This is 100% truth. Um, in all my, like, I guess you could call super tuning videos, go check those out. If you already got a pellet optimized for your gun that you think it's pretty much matched to your barrel, and you're still getting, you know, two or three shots around, like in a circular shape, like a clockwise shape, it's because of the barrel harmonics. So I already got those videos out there, but I just wanted to get you guys pretty much on the set road, set path to find the most optimized pellet for your gun. Um, because everybody's like, oh, you need to shoot all these different pellets. And that is not 100% true. You pretty much need to find the set grain or set range of grains that you need to stick to for that actual twist rate. Because you're going to be wasting your money if you're actually shooting the you know, a 21 grain pellet in this gun, even though I do, it's because I have them and I get them to shoot good. These aren't, the, those aren't the most optimized for this gun. I can make them shoot good in this gun. And, you know, again, that's just because I can do it. But for somebody that wants to find, the, again, the most optimized pellet for the gun, I hope these tips helped. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again.